Hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to the celebration today. I'm Tom Fay. I'm the chief librarian for the Seattle Public Library. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the su successful conservation of the Soul Pole and its return to its home for nearly 49 years, the Douglas Truth Branch. The library's goal from the beginning has centered around maintaining community access to the Soul Pole and preferably in its original spot, and we've done so today. We're delighted to see that it's standing tall on this historic corner. In early 2021, however, it became clear that the Soul Pole had deteriorated and needed some conservation, and we had hoped to return it to this location. While we knew that the sculpture was very important to Seattle's African American and Central District communities, the library emerged from this process with a clearer understanding and a deeper appreciation of its significance. As you can read in the original plaque, in 1969, artists associated with the Seattle Rotary's Boys Club carved the 21-foot tall sculpture to represent 400 years of African American history. It was gifted to the library in 1972 and was installed on April 24, 1973. Last year, after the Soul Pole was deinstalled by Art Tech and assessed for conservation, we began working with Stephanie Johnson Tolliver of the Black Heritage Society of Washington State to uncover more about its history. We're also grateful for their support and guidance throughout this process. We've learned about the role of Rakib Muid, formerly Gregory X, an artist and activist who served as the Rotary Boys Club, Rotary Boy Club art director and led the Soul Pole project. You can see in this poster Gregory X at the installation in 1973. He worked with youth from the Boys Club after school to carve the pole, a former telephone pole donated by the city. And it was designed to represent the 400 years of African American history and the struggle for justice. It's wonderful that Mr. Muid's son, Elijah, could join us today to share more about his father's work and legacy, as well as other family members. We've also learned more about Wilson Gully Sr., a community leader who was director of the Boys Club at the time of the Soul Pole and worked with Gregory X to make the project happen. Mr. Gully's support of the Soul Pole project is just one example of many innovative, innovative ways the Boys Club supported families in the Central District. They mentored kids and helped them thrive. It's a real honor that several of Mr. Gully's four children, Deborah Gully Collins, Wilson Gully Jr., and Keith Gully, as well as other family members and friends, could join us today to share more about their father and his important work in the community. As they will tell you, they worked on the Soul Pole themselves after school at the Rotary Boys Club with Mr. Muid. We've heard that the carving of the pole was a community effort, and I've also heard from several today that it wasn't easy. If you look at the original plaque at the base of the Soul Pole, you'll read the names of the five artists that are mentioned besides Gregory X. Brenda Davis, Larry Gordon, Gregory Jackson, Cindy Jones, and Gaylord Young. We know that these artists were high school students who worked on the Soul Pole and that most attended Garfield High. We're happy that Deja Davis is uh, here with us today, the granddaughter of Brenda Davis, and she's here to help us honor her grandmother's work. With more to learn about the youth in originally involved, we will continue to work with the Black Heritage Society on gathering and preserving this history. If you do have a story to share, Please look for a staff member today. Uh, they'll be roaming around through the audience and in, uh, here as we have some uh, drinks and treats. So please check in with us if you do have a story. We'd love to hear it. The Soul Pole is just one example of the Central District's community's deep involvement with the Douglas Truth Branch over the decades. The library is so grateful for the collaborations we've had with partners like Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, which established the branch collection of African-American literature in 1965. Since that time, the collection has grown to more than 10,000 items. If you go into the library after this program, I encourage you to explore the collection and please say hello to our new African-American collection and community engagement librarian, Taylor Brooks. And Taylor, if you're out here, wave your hand uh, for folks to see. There she is right back here. Uh, this is Taylor's second day, so don't ask her any trick questions. Um, she's a great librarian. She'll find an answer. It might just not be right in the moment. So uh, please say hi. 
Um, another name, uh, another example is this branch's very name as far as community involvement. Originally named after Henry Yesler, community leaders Millie Russell, who recently we learned was important in advocating for the gift of the Soul Pole, and Roberta Bird Barr, among others, founded a group called the Black Friends of Yesler Library, which raised f funds for the library and supported its growth and connections to the community. And through their efforts in organizing the community around a name change, the branch was renamed after abolitionists Frederick Douglass and Sojourner Truth. The last thing I want to mention is the conservation process. The initial focus of this project was conservation with the goal of preserving the soul pole in as close to its original form for as long as possible. We are grateful that we are able to work with Art Tech Fine Art Services, which has extensive experience in restoration and preservation, and that Corinne Landrieu, one of the Northwest's top conservators, directed the conservation work. We're happy that Corinne could join us today as well as Kate Dawson, a representative of Art Tech. They did exceptional work in conserving the Soul Pole in a way that would protect and stabilize it for many years to come. In alignment with these goals, dis despite the fact that it has undergone significant repair, you'll see almost no visible changes to the Soul Pole, with the exception of its new shiny hat. Uh, the new zinc cap is really to protect it from water and other insects and things getting in and having fun. So we have uh, made sure that won't happen anymore. And as soon as soon, excuse me, and soon we will be installing a new plaque to honor the Soul Pulse Conservation Project and its unique history. You can see a mock of a mock up of it here. I'm now pleased to hand the mic over to ADM Emery, who is the Chief Equity Officer of the, the city of Seattle. The mayor sends his regrets that he could not attend today, but ADM is here to give us some of his remarks. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The challenge of being on the grass and high hill, I keep sinking in. <laughs> so, if I'm getting stuck here, come okay, and pull so me out. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, and like my speech goes. You don't, you'll never fall. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tom Fay and the Seattle Public Library for bringing everyone together to celebrate um, of the successful conservation and reinstallation of the Seoul Pole. As we gather here today to celebrate again the conservation and reinstallation of the Seoul Pole, a, a 21 foot tall public sculpture that has stood tall at the Douglas Truth Branch of the Seattle Public Branch since 1973. We are also honoring the cultural significance centerpiece in the heart of Seattle's black community. Public art is one of the ways in which we preserve generational history and community narrative, especially in the face of gentrification and displacement of our community is experiencing currently. The Douglas Truth Branch holds a special place in the mayor's heart Growing up in the Central District, the mayor regularly took advantage of the library services. Um, a Garfield graduate, he went to the same school as the artist um, who created the Soul Pole. And what some of you might know, uh, that his mother also worked for Seattle Public Library as finance manager. I believe his special relationship with the public library can be seen today in our administration enthusiasm for our commitment to our public libraries. As I look at the poll, the Seoul poll and its history, it's a reminder to me the energy and investment we need to focus on our kids and youth. So we want to share our gratitude for what the library, the Black Heritage Society of Washington State, Art Tech and the community were able to accomplish here by working together as well as gratitude, gratitude for the Boys Rotary Club and all that they did for the community, including the Seoul Pole. This special mon um, moment represents both the past, the future, both the community built here and the opportunities the library will provide for so many in the future. Before I close my remark, and I thank you so much for having me here on this special day, um, I would like to introduce Stephanie Johnson Tolliver, who is the president of the Black Heritage Society of the Washington State, 
which maintains the largest public collection of African-American memorabilia in the state. The Black Heritage Society has been an important library partner on the Soul Pole Project and other, other ongoing initiatives with the library. Please help me welcome Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Oh, hello everyone. This is so wonderful, this, this day, seeing everyone in the community, this fabulous day in the neighborhood, uh, return of the Soul Pole to 23rd and Yesler. Um, it was probably just about a year ago this month when I stood here on this spot with uh, Seattle Public Library representatives and uh, folks from Converge Media to talk about the importance, significance, the history of the Soul Pole, and also just a little anxiety about the fact that it was going to be deinstalled. So that word deinstalled, I was just, uh, made me anxious, made me nervous. But um, what we know is that it went to a, a place, it went to Art Tech and with the conservators there to bring it back in this beautiful condition that you see today. The Black Heritage Society, along with uh, Seattle Public Library, as the restoration was going on with the poll, uh, really wanted to know more about the history, history of the poll, the carvers of the poll. We knew names, we knew a little bit about them. We knew that, you know, they attended Garfield High School and were at the Rotary Boys Club, but that was about it. So as the progress on the poll was happening, we, the library and BHS were reaching out to the community to say, please come forward. People came forward. And they continue to come forward to tell us the stories. And you'll hear some of those stories today. Um, I hope you'll ask, uh, particularly the Gully family that's here today. Um, and then also, uh, it, it'll be my pleasure to introduce uh, the, the lead artist son on this project in just a second. But I wanted to say that the poll, the soul poll represents uh, the tenacity and significance of the African-American footprint in the Central District. Um, this is a, a beacon on this corner, and I'm so proud today to see it back and just, you know, kind of fighting back to tears, just a teensy here, <laughs> to see it back. So um, I'm really happy to, to talk more about it, but I think with, um, with others behind me waiting to get, and share their, get up here and share their stories, um, I'm going to cut to the chase and um, introduce today um, the son of Raki Muid, Gregory X, Elijah Muid. Good afternoon. All right, let's get a little participation. Good afternoon. Thank you. Everybody feeling good? I know it's a little chilly. <laughs> I'm going to warm you up a little bit. <laughs> I want to uh, first of all thank the Seattle Public Library for putting on this event. I want to thank Arc Tech the ladies who were instrumental in, in doing the physical work of it, beautiful work, is very much appreciative. Uh, it is a momentous occasion for me and my family. Some of us are here right now. Um, as she just introduced me, I'm Elijah Muid. I am the oldest son of Raki Muid, formerly Gregory X, who was the art director at the Rotary Boys Club at the time. Uh, I wanna say it was 1969 that the pole was actually carved. Uh, so there's, there's legacy for us. So right. this is a very happy, happy uh, event for me. Um, I was three years old at the creation of the Soul Pole in 1969. But throughout the years, as I grew older, it was a source of pride for my family and I, having been introduced to the pole by my father, Rakib Muid, known at the time as Gregory QX. In recollection, of, of his stories, the soul pole for me was presented as an artistic representation of what his overall activism and mission in the pursuit of human 
equality for our people was. It was a depiction of struggle, growth, and awakening for African American people, starting in Africa, where we were taken to the advent of slavery and the fight for freedom and equal humanity. As an adult, my father shared his memories of the Boys Club, among other things, regarding his efforts to be not only an artistic guide to the young men and women, but a life teacher, if you will, a buffer between them and the outside world. I think the Boys Club was his first significant role as an activist and an excellent way to reach the young minds needing to be prepared to succeed in the future. He carved the top piece, the, the head, which represents uh, African-American awakening, our freedom, which many of us know we're still working on that to this day. <laughs> that's, a story, that's a story for another time. <laughs> My father's legacy was that of a black man born and raised in Seattle who loved his people and wanted to see them rise above the boundaries and obstacles that they faced. He aided in these efforts through his unwavering practice of his religious faith and also in the depiction of his art, uh, his mentorship, not only in his art, but his sharing of his work knowledge. Those of you who, who may know him know he was a master plumber, carpenter. He was involved in camps, uh, minor home repair project, taught a lot of, of young men and women a trade to help them grow. Um, so for, for me, this is a culmination of a legacy that his children, including myself, my sisters and brothers, still to this day do our part as artists and creatives to further along. And it is beautiful to see everybody out here. I'm grateful to see all, all of you. I wish some more people that I had invited would have come because this is a momentous piece of history. We're here for you. I, thank you. <laughs> um, in closing, I want to uh, give a little shout out to my dad. Um, may the memory of Rocky Muid forever be cherished. May his legacy live on and may his people finally find their fuel and full humanity. Thank you. It is my pleasure this, at this time to introduce you to uh, Wilson Gully, who was the executive director of the Boys Club at that time. His daughter is here to represent him. Her name is Deborah Gully Collins. You guys give your hands for Deborah Gully Collins. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to thank God for this opportunity to celebrate the reinstallment of the Soul Pole. Amen. I am thankful to have two of my brothers in attendance, Wilson Gully Jr. and his wife Maureen, Keith Gully and his wife Michelle, my aunt, my father's sister, Betty Reed, and my grandson, Davion Robinson. I remember being at the Rotary Boys Club with my father, Wilson Gully, when he was the executive director of the club. Also, our mother, Catherine Gully, was also there at the club working alongside her, her husband. Our father grew up in the Central, as he called it, attended Bailey Gassert Elementary School, Meany Junior High School, and as a proud graduate of Garfield High School. I spent many hours in the backyard with Gregory X working on the soul pole, chiseling, using a torch to burn the wood, my brother and I, Wilson, as well as uh, doing the sandpaper, which would, to me was the hardest, was making sure that he wanted to make sure that the soul pole was smooth. And also during this time, anyone working on the pole with Greg also received history lessons. Dad was a, a visionary. Some of his accomplishments during his tenure at the Rotary Boys Club were programs such as the Glee Club, where his uh, leader was Mr. Kirk teaching music. The library was, had updated materials. They had an updated game room, sports, arts, and craft. Also, there were college tours for students who wanted to go to uh, school. And every year, my father had what was called a celebration. It was the youth and parent of the year. And every year, he would bring a special celebrity to celebrate with that. 
the most important program to dad was the tutoring and transportation to pick up the youth and bring them to the club. So that way parents didn't have to worry about their child while they were at work. The club also included meals cooked by parents from the Parent Adult Council and dad stated many times, the parents are the backbones. Without the parents, he could not have made an excellent club. Dad's vision for the community was to offer a safe and holistic place for youth. Dad also wanted a striving community with businesses, economic development. We want to again thank everyone for making this day possible to help honor my father and others who worked on the poll. I know our father is smiling from heaven and thanking everyone and keeping his vision of our rich history alive through the Soul Poll. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah, for sharing uh, the stories about your dad, and thank you for the family for coming out today uh, to share this with us. Uh, thank you to Ediam for representing the mayor today, Elijah and Stephanie, thank you for sharing as well. I'm so glad this event is being recorded and captioned, allowing us to keep these stories in our special collections and to share these ex exceptional histories with all of Seattle. I also want to thank Converge Media, which produces content and local news for the Northwest's black community. They have been following the story of the Soul Pole through its conservation process and been a true partner in the communications. Before I close, I want to mention that we do plan to have a bigger celebration uh, probably next year when it's its 50th anniversary. So we'll hopefully see more folks here in attendance for that. And now uh, we do have some uh, refreshments here for folks and we can mingle outside, although it's looking a little menacing because Seattle can never be consistent in its weather and we know rain is likely to happen. We do have indoors a large uh, meeting room. So if it does start to uh, rain, staff will help lead you into the meeting room. And please, mingle, share stories. We'd love to hear more. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you all.